Hello guys, this is a, another little tip. Back many years ago when I was a machinist, um, you often used to have to machine um, large diameter, long shafts, and uh, often they were, they were just black or they were forged steel. Uh, so you couldn't put a steady straight onto them. So there was a technique we used to be able to get them set up to get a center inside. Obviously, if the shaft's very, very long, I've only got a short bed lathe. Um, so I can, I can fit around about 700 max between my centers. But if you have a, a longer slender piece of material, it won't fit up inside the snout. Um, you need to get a center in there so that you can get a diameter machined on either end to allow you to get a steady fixed to redo the center and then rotate it around to, uh, to get a center put into the other side. And often when, uh, when you're using forged steel, um, 4140s or the N25s, the N26s, the, the chrome molly steels, as you machine them, they tend to they tend to move quite a bit. So it's ideal if you can end for end them throughout the machining process to try and even out as much of that stress as you can whilst you're doing the machining. And one of the important things to do when you are doing that, you want to allow that shaft to move. So um, I'd put point aluminium packers in here to allow it to move in the jaws rather than straining the jaws up. But we're going to focus today on uh, how we go about getting a center into this and it's it's really simple. It's a job that I used to do back in the machine shop uh, before we started. And it's just a matter of finding the center just with the center finder, set of popping, uh, and then drilling by hand with a battery drill or electric drill, putting a center in there and it's a starter. Now it's not going to be exactly concentric when you do that. So you need to make sure that material is slightly oversized to allow for that slight difference uh, in the uh, in the diameter that you're going to machine uh, due to it being offset. And once again, it's important when you do that to have your aluminium packers in your jaws to enable it to move whilst that's happening. Uh, once you've got your, your steady registers machined in, as I said, you can set them up and then reseat or re-machine your, uh, your centers again. But uh, we'll take you out to the... Uh, out to the bench and we'll set up and we'll just do a, uh, a quick hand machine for that center. All right, so we've blued up or blackened up the, uh, the end that we want to put the center into. And uh, I use these little center finders. You can also get the center finders off the uh, off your combination sets. Set it in. Scratch your line. Now I'm using the Randy Richard carbide scriber here and this is an absolute little ripper it's really comfortable to use holding your hands and it's very sharp now I tend to put a few of these around like so let me find our center Alright. You get a nice center pop in there. One thing when you do buy tools, it's very important that you actually check them. Now that's a smaller center finder that I did purchase. And I find when I scribe the line and rotate it 180 degrees, the line is about a millimeter. It scribes two lines about a millimetre apart, so it ain't central. So always check when you buy gear, do your due diligence and check it out. Right, so we've got our centre pop in there quite nicely, and I'm going to get our centre into place. Well, let's put a little bit of lubricant onto that. I'm going to try and get it as square as we can. Square and as straight as we can. If you've got another person to give you a bit of a hand, just to eyeball it up, that's ideal. Right, we'll do this for a start. And I can see that is a little bit off. But that's the nature of trying to do things by hand. They will tend to wander a little bit. All right, let's go and get that set up in the lathe and uh, we'll see where we go from there. All right, guys, we've got that set back up again. 
we've got our aluminium packing in our jaws. We've got our center into place. Now this does have a slight woof in it. You'll see when I turn this on. And as I mentioned before, it's good to have the shaft OD oversized to allow for that little inconsistency when you, uh, when you do center by hand. But what that allows me to do now is to get a machining band at the tailstock end and a machining band put in at the headstock end, which allows me to fit up my, my fixed steady. Once I've got that fixed steady into place, I can then re-machine the, uh, the center and get it a little bit deeper and open it out a little bit. Um, once I've done that, I can then end for end it, put the, uh, the fixed steady back on again onto that uh, second band that we've machined and then machine in my center. Okay, so just a very quick little tip on, on how to deal with long slender shafts that you can't get right up inside the snout. There's a fair bit of overhang, but you need to machine them and you want to get a start. So just uh, just drilling in a, uh, a center by hand, get you started anyway. And you can go from there. All right, guys, hope this little tip helps someone, helps someone out and, uh, and we'll see you soon.